Conceptually, an independent judiciary has always been part of Ghana's governance systems since independence. One of the most notable judges ever appointed as Chief Justice by President Nkrumah was Sir Aku Kosa. Your Excellency, do you now affirm your willingness to accept the high office of President of the Republic of Ghana? I do. The glorious history of Ghanaian Chief Justices would also remember Edward Akufuado and Justice F.K. Apalu to mention but a few. The first ever Chief Justice appointed under the Fourth Republic was Mr. Justice Philip Archer. He was a holdover Chief Justice from the PNDC era. His appointment as the first Chief Justice under the Fourth Republic was made and continued by Flight Lieutenant Rawlings. The Chief Justice in Ghana is also the President of the Supreme Court, the highest court of the land, which presides over all constitutional matters. The Leonard Justice Philip Archer will be remembered for the 31st December case, in which the Supreme Court ruled by a 5-4 decision that J.J. Rawlings's 31st December will not be celebrated as a public holiday. Unfortunately, the Leonard Chief Justice voted with the minority in that particular decision. The decision of the court also offended the J.J. Rawlings government. So Justice Philip Archer was succeeded by Justice Aban. Historically, Chief Justice Aban was known for taking a firm position as a electoral commissioner to stick with the results of a 1970s referendum organized by the Kutu Achampong military junta to convert Ghana into a union government of military and civilian actors. The professional bodies of the day, the Ghana Bar Association, the Ghana Medical Association, and other professional bodies and students from the National Union of Ghana Students campaigned across the country for a no vote. Just as Abana's electoral commission had to flee for his life because the military junta wanted him to announce a verdict for a yes vote. The rest of the story, as they say, is history. So it was with such high reputation that Justice Aban came to the seat as the Chief Justice of the Republic on 22nd February 1996, the day after PENK Archer retired. Justice Aban was also appointed by J.J. Rawlings in his first term as constitutional president. Justice Aban's tenure did not see as much activity at the Supreme Court on constitutional issues as did the four years before him, because at this time, the opposition New Patriotic Party had joined Parliament in 1997. Parliament thus became the forum for political discussion. J. H. Mensah, the minority leader, however, took out a writ at the Supreme Court during Justice Aban's time. Led by his lawyer, Nana Kufuado, the two of them challenged the idea that former ministers of the immediate past presidential term did not need to appear before Parliament if the president who had been re-elected for a second term had wanted them to continue in the same portfolios that they held. So, for instance, Mr. Richard Kwame Pepra was finance minister under Rawlings' first term. J.J. Rawlings won a second term in 1996 and wanted Kwame Pepra to continue as finance minister. The position of the NDC was that, in such circumstances, Kwame Pepra need not appear before Parliament's appointment committee. So, J.H. Mensah and his lawyer sued in what is now famously called J.H. Mensah versus the Attorney General. Akufuado won the case for J.H. Mesa. Justice Aban did not sit, but he empaneled Justice Akins, Charles Hay from Benjamin, Justice Zampia, and Justice Aqua and Sophia Akufu, who is today the incumbent Chief Justice. Justice Aban was also the Chief Justice when the Supreme Court decided in the year 2000 that only photo ID cards should be used as identification cards for election 2020. That was thought to be a victory for democracy. Justice Aban it was, who then swore in President Kufu in January 2001. In the name of the Almighty God, swear. Do in the name of the Almighty God, swear. 
A few months later, after swearing in President Kufo to be president, it was reported that the distinguished judge was unwell. He retired voluntarily and Justice Ridu was appointed Chief Justice by President Kufo sometime in 2001. Justice Redu came to the seat with a noble desire to cure the constitutional defect that gave no upper limit to the justices of the Supreme Court. That is to say, while the U.S. Federal Supreme Court had a maximum limit of nine judges, all of whom sat on every constitutional case, in Ghana there was no upper limit. Sometimes the judges were 11, sometimes they were nine. Now we have 15, and it could be 20, 22, or any other number. So to cure this defect, Justice Redu decided by a practice direction that all Supreme Court judges, including himself, will sit on any and every constitutional matter. So that Supreme Court judges appointed by the NDC and Supreme Court judges appointed by the MPP will all sit on every constitutional matter, even if there were 11 of them. Then came the first opportunity to apply this practice direction. It was a case in which Chachu Chikata, a lawyer, had challenged the establishment of the so-called fast-track courts. Mr. Chikata was of the view that the fast-track courts were unconstitutional and that they had been created to railroad the cases of political opponents of Mr. Kufo and to jail them quickly by ignoring the rules of justice. So Chief Justice Redu empaneled himself and all the judges of the Supreme Court. Chachu Chikata won the Supreme Court verdict by a 5-4 decision Justice Redu voted with a minority of four. Pandemonium broke. The Attorney General Anaku Fuado was unhappy. He held a press conference where he disagreed with the majority decision and indicated that he will appeal the decision, setting the stage for a Supreme Court review. There were 10 Supreme Court justices at the time. One of them was unwell, so couldn't sit for the case. So nine of them sat. According to the practice direction, all of the 10 had to sit if there was a review. And because 10 was an even number, President Kufu was invited to appoint another judge to make it the odd number of 11. So, 11 justices were ready for the review. The new two joined the old four. The old five stuck together. So, the verdict was 6-5 against Chachu Chikata. The original decision of the Supreme Court of Nine had been overturned on a review. The fast-track court stood. Chachu was tried for causing financial loss to the state. He was convicted and jailed, later pardoned by President Kufu, but eventually mounted a successful appeal against his conviction at the Court of Appeal. So today, Mr. Chikata is not an ex-convict. So that was the eventful part of Justice Redu's tenure as Chief Justice. The practice direction that every Supreme Court judge must sit has been abolished, and the status quo ante was restored. The Chief Justice will now empanel judges for each Supreme Court case and the Chief Justice himself or herself may decide to sit or not. Justice Radio retired on 19th June 2003 and Justice Aqua, who actually led the majority opinion of the Supreme Court review in the Chachu case, became the new Chief Justice, also appointed by President Kufu, and he was appointed on the 4th of July 2003. Unfortunately, Justice Kinsley Aqua became the first Chief Justice to die in office sometime in 2007. That paved the way for President Kufour to make history. He appointed to the seat the first female Chief Justice of the Republic of Ghana. So, enter Chief Justice Georgina Wood, one of the earliest tension packed responsibilities for the new Lady Chief Justice was to see the election of 2008 go to a close context with some legal gymnastics in the background. Eventually, she was called upon to swear in the winner, Professor J.E.A. Mills. Then came election 2012. Controversy struck after the losing candidate did not accept the results and instead decided to file an election petition at the Supreme Court before Chief Justice Georgina Wood and the rest of the Supreme Court judges. Justice Georgina Wood had to empanel the court to hear the election petition at the end of December 2012. She also had to prepare to swear in the new president whose election was being challenged and whose swearing in had been boycotted by the entire opposition and the losing candidate. So what did Georgina Wood actually do? She did both. She empaneled the courts to hear the election petition and she also proceeded to the Independence Square on the 7th of January to swear in President Mahama. 
So then came the biggest test for Justice Georgina Wood. She did take two major defining steps. One was unpopular with a large majority of lawyers within Ghana, but the other was popular with the general public and has had far-reaching consequences. And I hope you forgive me for dwelling on this. Her decision to broadcast the proceedings of the celebrated election petition in which I was plaintiff, together with the Vice President and our late lamented colleague, Tanka Obeche Bilamte, was an important moment in our nation's political evolution. It exposed the vagaries of our electoral system and compelled greater vigilance on the part of the activists of my party, which undoubtedly helped us achieve the famous victory of 7 December 2016. The other matter that was unpopular with lawyers was that Georgina Wood did not empanel herself for the election petition. Therefore, on an important matter like the election petition, Ghanaians did not get to know the legal position of the head of the judiciary. The lawyers were unhappy, but the live coverage thrilled everyone. So then came Justice Sophia Akufu, another female to become the Chief Justice of the Republic of Ghana, appointed by President Akufuado. Today, Justice Sophia Akufu has run her full tenure, and this story is about who becomes the next Chief Justice of Ghana to be appointed either in the next few days, in the next few months, but certainly before January 2020. Recommended that in future the rules should be tightened such that only the party to the election and the electoral commission should be made respondents. The man you just heard is Justice Jones Doche. He is one of the two giant contenders that President Akufado will be considering to replace Sophia Kufu. The other one is Justice Eni Yeboa. Justice Doche is two years ahead of Justice Eniyeboa by seniority at the bar. However, they were all appointed to the Supreme Court on 11 June 2008, nominated by President Kufuor. This matter would obviously be a difficult decision for President Akufuado, but it is President Akufuado who is more than sufficiently endowed to make such a difficult decision. After all, he's been at the bar for 40 years, and he's the first president who has come to the presidency from an active practice at the bar before the Supreme Court, before the Court of Appeal and before the High Court. So this is his decision to make. If you look at it that way, then the most important case that has affected Akufado's legal and political life will be the election petition. And both judges, Jones Doche and Eniyeboa, sat at the election petition and delivered their verdicts. In fact, President Akufado actually quoted Justice Jones Doche in his concession. Getting further into the case, we realize that Justice Jones Doche, in his ruling, nullified all the votes on the pink sheet that had not been signed and also said all the votes out of overvoting should be discarded. He said further that after the nullification and the discarding, if neither candidate had won 50% plus one, there should be a rerun between President Mahama and President Akufado. That's what Jones Doche said. Hear what Eni Yeboa said. He said, and I quote, I will therefore grant the relief one in view of the evidence led and decline to grant relief two. I, however, as consequential order, order the second respondent, that is the electoral commission, to organize an election to elect a president as I cannot rely on an election which was seriously fraught with the malpractices, irregularities and statutory violations proved in this petition to declare the first petitioner as having been duly elected, unquote. Justice Eniyeboa was therefore saying that the malpractices, the violations had all been proved in the petition and it was therefore impossible for him to declare President Mahama as validly elected. Thus, most of the MPP lawyers support Justice Eniyeboa to become the next Chief Justice. They, the MPP lawyers, must be putting a lot of pressure on President Akufuado who is the sole decision-maker in this matter. However, 
It is believed that the influential cousin of the president, lawyer Gabi Asara Chudaku, Attorney General Gloria Ekufu, outgoing Chief Justice Sophia Ekufu, and a few others within the close circle of Akufuado have a soft spot for Justice Jones Doche. But the charge from the MPP lawyers is led by equally influential people. Secretary to the President, Nana Sante Bedieto, Minister for Works and Housing, Atachia, Lawyer Philip Addison, the lead counsel in the election petition, and many more MPP lawyers within government are supporting Justice Eni Eboa. It is reported that Deputy Attorney General Godfrey Dame will most likely side with the MPP lawyers to throw his weight behind Justice Eni Eboa, even though he has very close relations with Justice Jones Doche as well. So what's the odds saying? We think that is a 2 to 1 for Justice Eniebua to be named the next Chief Justice of Ghana. And it is a 3 to 1 for Justice Jones Doche to be named the next Chief Justice of Ghana. Good luck to both men and also fare thee well Justice Sophia Kufu. We shall always remember and maintain the high standards that you advocated for for new lawyers. And yes, Justice Sophia Kufu, yes, we remember. Our girls have taken your advice. They will wait and buy their own iPhones. Yourself to some dirty old man for an iPhone or for any type of phone. It is a tool. That's all. One day you will own. You'll be able to buy one if you are patient and you do not throw away your virtue. <laughs> Oh,